In this video, we're going to look at the online retailer Alibaba. This is a massive company, and I'm going to be looking at the stock that's trading on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. And what I do in my videos is I run my discounted cash flow model to figure out the true value of a company's stock. I also look at the financial ratios and compare them with its competitors. I do this with you throughout the entire video, so it's like we're doing it together. Let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of 5.34 trillion and they're trading at 246.60. And now let's get the free cash flows. And the way you value a company is you forecast the future free cash flows, then you discount that number back to today's value. That's exactly what I'm doing in this video. And free cash flow is a cash flow from operating a business minus capital expenditures. Now I'm going to pull the net income, which is the profit and loss on the income statement. And then I'm going to pull the revenue, which are the sales on the income statement. And look how much they've grown. Unbelievable. 158 billion to 500 billion in just three years and their free cash flow has more than doubled in three years let's look at the capital structure of the company so we know what discount rate to apply to the future cash flows the interest they pay on their debt is 5.2 billion dollars let's go to the balance sheet to see how much debt they have we'll go to liability section current debt of 5.2 billion that's debt due within 12 months Long-term debt of $120 billion, that's debt due after 12 months. Since interest payments are tax deductible, let's get the effective tax rate. Income before tax of $166 billion. Income tax of $20 billion. So effective tax is 12%. Cost of debt is 3.6%. Let's get the cost of equity. We need the beta. The beta is how volatile the stock is relative to the market. So they have a beta of 1.56, so the stock moves roughly one and a half times the market. Let's go back to the balance sheet to get the current assets. We need this to calculate the current ratio later. That's 462 billion. We also need the current liabilities. These are debts and payables that are due within 12 months. That's 242 billion. And the equity, which is assets minus liabilities, that's 755 billion and their EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes. That's on the income statement, that's called operating income. That's 93 billion. Let's look at the capital structure. They have 14% debt and the cost of debt is 3.6%. They have 86% equity and the cost of equity is 14.3%. So the WAC is about 13%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's the discount rate we're gonna to apply to the future cash flows. So we estimated four years of future free cash flows. We did a terminal value, which is all years past year four. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $4 trillion. We divide that by 21 billion shares and we get an intrinsic stock price of 186. They're trading at 246, so they're trading at a 33% premium. So it's a sell according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street values the company at. They're at 170, so they're also saying it's a sell. So just because a company has really strong financials and they're growing doesn't mean you should buy the stock. It depends the valuation. You wouldn't pay $110 for a $100 bill, but you would pay $90 for a $100 bill. Just because something's worth a lot doesn't mean you should always pay for it. Let's look at the historical stock price. So the stock has been pretty much moving up over time. It dropped a little. It looks like during coronavirus, but it's come back up a little. For a long-term investment, you really can't go wrong with a company like this. Let's look at the financial ratios. They have a pretty bad PE of 36. That's price of stock, 246 over earnings per share. And earnings per share is net income over shares outstanding. I like to see below 15. You always want to compare ratios to similar companies, which we'll do in a few minutes. 
they have a high price of sales that's 10.5 and you calculate that by taking a stock price over sales per share sales per share is revenue over shares outstanding I like to see below 2.5 for this ratio they have a high price to book a 7.1 that's price of stock over book value per share book value per share is equity over shares outstanding I like to see below 3.5 for this ratio the current ratio is 1.9, so that's good. They can cover their current liabilities with their current assets. ROE at 20%, which is good. That's income over equity, so they are providing their equity holders with a good value. Interest coverage ratio of 18, that's EBIT, 93 billion over 5.2 billion interest expense, so they can easily cover their interest expense. And the best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Momo, JD, Amazon, eBay, and Etsy. And Alibaba is here in the middle. And if their numbers in green, they're better than the average in the industry. If they're in red, they're worse than the average. So they are better than the average in price to earnings just because some companies like Amazon and Etsy have such a high price to earnings. They're worse in price to sales. JD.com is the best in that category with an impressive 1.3. They do have the best price to book, even though it's not great, they're just the best in their industry. That's why I said you have to look at similar companies to really figure out if the ratio is good or not. They have a good current ratio, 1.9, they're better than the average. They're worse than the average in ROE at 20%. They're better than the average in debt. The average is 32%, they're at 14%. And when I convert their market cap to US dollars, they are better than the average. They're second place to Amazon. So let me know what you think of the video. This is a great company with a great future. Thanks for watching.